late night pickup again. We are on our way to go get a parts sled. Um, as you guys know, the Articat from 1972, the 340, needs a new gas tank and um, a new gas cap and potentially a new carburetor. So we are going to pick up a 440. Um, I guess the gas tank swaps over. And I think the carburetor is the same as well, at least the bottom part of it. So we are gonna swap those parts. Um, a subscriber hit me up actually, and he was like, I think I have a part sled for you. And he sent a bunch of videos of it, was really nice about it, and said I could have it for 150. So stay tuned, we will update you when uh, when I get there. Actually, we didn't bring one, I've got my phone though. All right, let's see, out, okay. Let's see. Yeah, I'm happy you messaged me on this thing. Yeah, this is the Panther, man. I, he knows a lot more about them. Okay. Them actually. But I know this one's actually locked up, but I know it did run. Okay. But everything is there besides the air filter. Yeah, it looks like the carbs there. That'll probably work on a 340, right? I, I would think. I think I... Hello. Hello. How's it going? Oh, I'm Joe. Yeah, I heard a lot about you. And yeah. I've seen some of your videos. Yeah, nice to meet you. I and mean, I kind of did the stuff back in the day when I was younger, and I, I like you know you end up getting more stuff than you know what to do. Oh with yeah, them. yep. And then they sit here, and then yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's see what the gas tank looks like here. Oh yeah, yeah. Appreciate the videos you sent. No problem. They look pretty good in there. Yeah, I couldn't get too far down in there. Yeah, actually, whilst it was put in there, was fresh gas. Yeah, it looks good. It, way, way, I, and of course, it was a mixed gas because, yeah, it's two stroke. It don't have no oil. So that probably it. kept it from rusting because it had oil well, in yeah. it. <laughs> you know? And, yeah, with the water, whatever might got in there. Yeah. Way better than my tank, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Mine well, was, I kind of figured that because, yeah, I seen that picture too where you had the picture down inside. And yeah, it was. It definitely had to have some moisture that sat in there for a while. But. Yeah, that my, my tank has holes. <clears throat> oh, and of course. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to deal with that. You know, this is just some, I mean, all that rubber and everything is still good on it. All right. I, and the seat is actually good. It was actually wrapped in the plastic garbage bag. Okay. I mean, actually, if you rewrapped it in the vinyl, it would be a good seat. Okay. I mean, kind of like this type of stuff. I yeah. Mean, if you know how to do that stuff. Uh, but, yeah, the motor was locked up. It had been freed up before. Uh, we didn't originally when it first came around here had it running with prime in the carb okay. uh, and put a little fresh mixed gas in but it didn't seem to want to pump it through and I'm like I really don't want to go through and see if I got a plug line whatever yeah. and yep. so I yeah you. I got kind of put on the side and but that one I did go through and it did run that's that uh, the whip okay and uh, that thing uh, went pretty good, I, and I didn't want to open it up because with the new piston, you don't want to go, way crunch. Yeah, yeah that would be bad. <laughs> and Because uh, I've seen a lot of people do that. Yep. They rebuild something, and then they think they can go full bore on it and end up going crunch again. Yep, yep. Because they didn't do their break-in. Yep. So they broke it in. <laughs> How many miles on this thing? Even Most have never worked. It's just it's just zero miles. Really? Yeah, it's, if it's Doesn't even, even have one mile on it. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. I'd say the cable on there's probably broke or yeah. somebody did one of them fan yeah. angle things. They must have when they first bought it, um, they probably took off the speedometer cable. So it wouldn't show the mileage, maybe. Uh -huh. I don't know. Maybe that ended up breaking or something. I don't uh, know. Yeah, that's really weird. Of course, when it's a cable hookup like that, I found uh, yeah a lot of people that got uh, nailed for odometer tip backs. Uh oh, yeah. because you can un unscrew the speed old cable and you hook a drill up to it, whatever, and whether you run it forward or backwards to turn your oh. mileage back, and you sit there for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Right yeah, there's all kinds of yeah. My grandpa used to tell me all kinds of little tricks you could do, and <laughs> you know, but some of them were good tricks. Exactly. Yeah. The ski looks good too. Mine, mine's all uh, broken right at the end here. Oh, yeah, so. and I just did. I when I got them around here, 
I, I obviously, it does the sled no good to be sitting, you know, exactly. eyeing the tracks, going to go with a teaser. How is the track in this? I mean, actually ain't too bad. I mean, it's got that free stuff, kind of like what you're showing in your video. Yeah, the cleated, I mean, the cleated thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, about the same shape as but mine. But you never know, that's another thing. You decide to get it going and you open it up a little bit and next thing you know, the track shot out the back. Yeah, exactly. It's a you know it's 150 bucks. I'm not expecting it to be right. perfect. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be the same well, tank. No, actually, That's yeah, what I like for what that. it is. It's actually in decent shape. Yeah, it's not too bad. Oh, I'm just happy the tank isn't rusted. That's <laughs> that's the main. Well, and thing. that was one of the things when he, I said, "Well, I'm sure that tank the one out there is." In a lot better shape than what these looks. I'm. It's got to bolt up because it's the exact same. Yeah, the same snap same thing. pattern, everything. Yeah. <coughs> same yeah, lights yeah. in the back. Well, it's got. Sure it probably had, had uh, chrome had rails the beside it and everything. Yeah, it's exactly the same. So it's got to be. I tried to look up a diagram, but of course there wasn't one. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, and that's another thing. A lot of shops you go to now. Oh, our mechanics don't know how to work on that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we we don't got the books and anything. You can't pull it up on the computer. Yep, I know. That's. Well, yeah, kind of like you know the old points condenser stuff. What yep. are those? A lot of mechanics are saying. Yeah. 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 <coughs> yeah. This is the exact same engine too, just diff a little bit different. So, really. Yep. Wow. Exact same um, area like this. Yeah, everything looks exactly the yep. same. Oh, and I told Drake. I don't know, this is an old school trick I learned too. Okay. To help stop your mice from getting into this high wheel area, mm -hmm. an old coffee can lid type plastic lid. Okay. When you put it for storage, uh, you know, to help stop them little buggers. Yeah, from, yeah. that's a good idea, yeah. I, well, I actually got a Toro snowblower over there. I had a wash tub sitting over the motor. It's not bad. Obviously. And I pulled the wash tub yeah, off. Here, the corner of the... A yellow gas tank was chewed on, not on, like, like a chipmunk or a mouse. <laughs> and, yeah, they literally gnawed a hole in it. So now it was kind of a junk, but I just took some JB weld and plugged the hole and welded yeah. it up. And <laughs> yeah, they like to get in everything. <clears throat> yeah. They wreck a if lot they of can, stuff. I mean, if they think it tastes good, smells good, they can make a nest out of it in it. Yeah, they're going to do it. I wonder if there's a mouse in here. <laughs> uh, yeah, you never know. Oh, there was one in there. Awesome in there. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Yeah, this this area is in better shape than mine too. I could just use that. Uh... Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, a couple nice parts on it. We're yeah sitting there. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'll take this one for sure. And then, what's the story on this one over here? Is that the one for sale, or what's the other yep. one for sale? Well, actually, I got my old Skidoo over there that locked up the motor for 100 bucks. It's a 69 Nordic 399, but this one here, uh, I did have it running a few years ago. It's not locked up. Okay. Uh, put a new piston in the one side. It's got the Wesco piston in it. Okay. I mean, actually, on this side, because that's why I kind of did that, because I'll let, I, and I let people know what I do to it. Yeah. I ain't going to say, oh, I put all new pistons and had the cylinders board. No, I didn't do all that. Because it, it's uh, actually burned the hole in this piston because they were running too hot of plugs in it. Mm. So you're going to need help loading uh, that. And uh, I had it running. I mean, it does pull over like a mule, but I didn't, yeah, I, I got the choke closed so nothing gets in my car. And as far as I know, if you were to take and probably put fresh gas in it, you could probably fire this one up. Huh. Well. Because I mean, it had new plugs put in it, you know. Obviously missing that cover like it's supposed to have a plastic yeah. shield that goes on here. Yeah, it's like the skidoos had they had the plastic that had the points that come down, pins, something like that. Yeah, they're all pretty much basically the same. Yeah. You know, this this time period. It's not yeah, I, it's not that hard to work on. Well, you know? the thing is, yeah, that's why I was telling him, I says I liked it a lot better. It wasn't no oil injection, liquid cooling, yeah. none of that. I said, yeah, I, and what wasn't good is you didn't want to run them around too much in the summer because they didn't have no air getting cold enough yep. to keep them cool because yep. I, and that's where a lot of them would rip the hoods off the old thing so they could run them around in the summer. Yep. 
But then you end up blowing the motor belt and everything that's coming up in your face. Yeah. <laughs> How much you want for this one? This one I got 300 bucks on. Okay. And this thing, when I got it running, I was going half, three-quarter throttle. It was going 65, almost 70 on the speedo. Wow. That's a fast one. That's what I said for being that old. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's just it. A lot of people like, what? And I'm like, yeah, a lot of them are going slightly be surprised. <laughs> like my old Skidoo over there, that was more like a battle tank. Wow. Where I could hook up to anything. I could hook up to your trailer and pull it in the wintertime. <laughs> that's uh, funny. Yeah, because I pulled across the country screen gear with that old Skidoo out on the golf course and Dells. Really? Yep. Well, I'll probably pass on this one for now. Well, that's fine. I, and you then know where it's at? Yeah. Kind of... Oh, yeah, if I need another project. All right, last night was a late night pickup. We made it home. There's the snowmobile on the trailer. Made it home about 8.30 last night, so I didn't want to unload it and do all that stuff. But basically today, we are going to get this thing up and running. Last video on this thing, we got it home. It actually ended up being locked up. So we got it unlocked and then it didn't have spark. So then we got spark and it finally started up, but the filter for the carburetor broke off. So we couldn't get gas to the carburetor. So we dumped gas down the carb and it fired up for a few seconds and you know, ran pretty steady if I continuously added gas to the carburetor. Um, the other problem with this thing was the gas cap gas cap does not latch on to the gas tank and then the gas tank is super super rusty and there's actually holes you can see it's leaking right here so I'll show you guys the gas tank before we go look at the other one yeah, you can see all the heavy rust in there so yeah that uh, that's gas tanks toast but we got the other one so let's go check that out and see if the parts are gonna work um, it does have the carburetor on the other one as well. We'll see which carb works. We also have an extra one in here. That might work. And this one actually doesn't have a filter on the bottom. And it's just a direct line going in. So that might work as well. I'm not sure why he took this one off. But maybe it just needs to be cleaned up and we can use that one. We will have to see. Let's go check out the other one and see what that looks like. I ended up paying 160 for it. He wanted 150, but he helped me load it and then he helped me back up the trailer since it was pretty tough to back up. But here it is. You can see she's a little rougher than the other one. I paid 150 for the other one, but that was a great deal. This one's been sitting for a long time. The guys that sold it to me were really, really nice, really helpful, and uh, seemed to know a lot about the sled, so that kind of helped. This one is unfortunately locked up. They said the other one wasn't, but they said this one was, so I don't know if we can get it free or not. I'll have to maybe dig into that today as well, if we can get the other one driving. But you can see the carburetor is on it. I don't know if it's usable or what. But uh, we'll see what happens. Basically the same engine, it looks like. The coil's the same. This whole side piece is the same. Um, yeah, this one's got zero miles on it. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Everything's kind of locked up on it. Take a look in here. What's going on? Nothing in there. But the gas tank, let's check that out. Vinny's barking in the background. He wants to come and look at it. This gas tank is so much better. <laughs> That's pretty clean. Let's see if I can get a close up look here. Kinda hard to see in there. But it is way, way better than the other one I had. Yeah, it's a little blurry. But uh, we'll get this thing off the trailer and start using parts from it. 
And then I might use a ski too, because the other one had a hole in it back here. So I'm wondering if we can take this one off and use that. That might work. And then the hood is in nice shape too. It does have the headlights still. Just needs a good cleaning. Yeah, that was heavy. I think we're just gonna leave it there for now. <laughs> and uh, start stripping parts off of it. Checking out the track here. Here's a wheel. Hopefully it's time for this one. It doesn't look horrible. It's a little rusty. Yeah, that track doesn't look that bad. Well, that's good. So really, we just need the gas sink off this thing. And potentially the carb. So let's go in here. Start stripping this one down. Getting these parts off. And then we can do a little swap roux. Hopefully. Hopefully everything lines up. But to get this gas sink off, What's that held on by? This outer shell. Not really sure. Hmm. Hopefully you don't have to go underneath here to get that off. That would really suck. All right, so figure it out. You gotta loosen up that bolt, that bolt. That bolt, that bolt, and this side rail comes off. And uh, see the gas tank, how that little piece sticks out? That goes into the plastic over there. So these have to be spread out in order to get the gas tank out. So I got both sides off. These were kind of tricky because you had to go up through there with a flathead screwdriver to hold the bolt in place. You could take off the nut. But other than that, it wasn't too bad. Held on by that sticky pad. Let's go right by the line here. A little bit melted, take your handy dandy pliers, get that loose, and I'll pull right off of there, like so, and then on with the other side. I'm gonna do the other side too. So heat that up, heat gun. Make sure no gas is on it. pliers go back and forth with it break that up should pull right off there we go all right now this gas tank should pull right out of here there we go all right we pretty much have this one out just gonna cut the line So, shake that up. Sounds like there's some ice in there. We gotta empty that out next. All right, so I think this is kind of how we're gonna set this up. Um, there's just a line in there going down to the bottom. It's gonna suck up gas going down here. 
We're gonna get a quick blow up these lines before we do anything else, but um, yeah, you can see it leads to here. So blow that out, make sure all the lines are clear. But check out the gas tank now, now that we have it in here. There was a bunch of ice in there. You can see how much cleaner that is. Very light surface rest at the bottom. Nothing serious though. So that's gonna work out great for us. All right, we're gonna blow through these lines with an air compressor. Just see if they are clear. That one's clear. You can hear it, this one. Hmm, that one's a little bit clogged up it looks like. That one's going through here, I believe. So you guys keep an eye on that, see if anything comes out of there. Seems like it's clogged up pretty good. At least a little bit. Oh, hard to tell. Let's go from the other way, let's blow through here. That line might be clogged. All right, we got it unclogged. It was just the tip I had to cut off. That was packed full of rust in here. So now, yep. All right, that line's clear. Awesome. All right, time to get the carburetor off. Um, looks like this is gonna be 13 millimeter nuts on there. Oh, as well. And then the choke lever has to come out. Ooh, that was on there. I should just... That'll come out after that. All right. Those have to be loosened up. And this one, pull that cable through. And then this one is the throttle. Pull that through. Loosen these up. I had this off once before to um, get the coil pack cover out. Pretty easy carb to take off. Nothing too crazy going on. There is a vacuum line right here as well. Get that off. Carb is off. Let's go open that up. What we're gonna do is see if we can use this carb with a different bottom. Cause I like this, but the other one had a nipple coming out of here instead of this filter. So we'll see if we can swap parts. All right, so this is the one where the filter twisted onto it. You can see here's the filter. And when I was taking off that line, I broke off the the nipple on the filter right here. So there's no way to fix that. You can see the line just snapped right off the filter. So I think what we're gonna do is take this cover off and just see what's underneath there. We could do a quick cleaning too. But it seemed to run good with just gas down the carb. I'm wondering if it doesn't even need a cleaning. I 
the guy drained it out before he put it away, it might not need to be cleaned. I don't like messing with these carbs, cleaning them, because they, they have gaskets in them, a lot of them. And those gaskets can break really easily. And a lot of those are like pumps and diaphragms. And I just don't want to break those. They're hard to uh, replace. I'd have to wait for parts to come in and nobody has time for that. <laughs> this whole thing is going to start coming apart. What's nice is we have two carburetors in case we mess up something. So that whole thing came off like that. I'm trying to just get the one piece off of here. But it looks like that gas is going to be a problem. Let's just see what's underneath the screen here. That looks pretty clean in there. Nothing wrong with that. Let's see if I can take the whole thing off. I don't want to rip any gaskets. New, I think we're going to leave it for now. If it doesn't run right, we're going to clean it all out, but so far, I mean, everything looks intact, so I'm going to leave it. I don't want to break anything in there. So, we've got that apart. Let's go to this one. Get this one off and see if we can swap, swap it over. Wouldn't that be awesome? Looks to be the exact same carburetor except for the bottom. Let's see if this one comes up oh, right there. All right, let's see if they're the same. They look exactly the same to me, don't they? Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. This one's got a little crud in it. You can see it was a little bit dirty. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna swap that right over. Call her good. Cool. I did not think that was gonna work. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that looks good. All right, we're just gonna put that on there. And now we have a workable carb. All right, gas lines are all hooked up correctly. Going to the carburetor. We shouldn't have any leaks. So let's add some premix to it and see if it pumps. Mix up some 40 to one. Choke it.
Doesn't appear to be pumping. So yeah, it's it's not pumping. Um, not sure what's going on. Maybe it needs to be primed. Not sure. We'll start it up again with the line off of it. Yeah, she's not pumping. All right, time to tear this whole carburetor apart. See if that pump in there is working. I thought for sure it would be fine, but apparently not. <laughs> So first this one comes off, and that comes off, all right, and then where's my little screwdriver here? To get these guys off, there's actually a little notch right here. Oh crap, I think I just broke that. There's the pump mechanism. Did I break through that? I don't think I did actually. Let's get this off of here. So this basically sits like that. Little spring fell out. If these little springs go right in there. I don't know where the other one went. There it is. So air comes in through here. It moves this up and down. And that's supposed to pump. A little spring in there. Stretch it out a little bit. And then you've got this diaphragm right here. We can gently peel this off. Pretty hardened up. I do have another one right here that feels a little bit more flexible. You can see the difference between the two. This one's hard, this one's still flexible. See that? So I'm wondering if that was the problem. That feels fine. Sometimes you just have to wet it to make it functional again. A little WD-40 on there. It's pretty flexible, I mean. I don't know, I guess we can install that one and see if that works. All right, so that's the first pump right there. And there should be another one underneath here. So let's just see, by the needle. We can get it off. We have to hammer on that. There we go. It's coming. I don't want to rip anything. Uh, 
Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Look at that. That's rough in there. Oof. Man. Diaphragm's pretty rough as well. Yeah. So that's really dirty. You can see the needle is completely clogged. Um, I think what we're going to do is use this one instead. This carburetor looks way better, actually. You can see. So the carburetor that was in the machine as a spare looks way better than the one that was on it. Look at all that crud. It's really gross. <laughs> That's really bad. So we are not going to use this one. We're going to try the other one, see if that works. All right, we changed out the carburetor, and uh, I thought that was going to for sure fix the problem, but it's not pumping anything. I think our vacuum line, or our vacuum isn't working. Um, it was kind of pushing out, and I think it should be sucking in. So I'm thinking that crank seal is bad, and, and the engine's not holding pressure. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And that would make sense because this thing sat 30 years. So I think a lot of people had problems with the, the crank seals going and the vacuum not working. So I'm kind of thinking that was the issue. So I think what we're going to do is tear down the whole engine and uh, replace those crank seals. I think that's the only thing we can do. <laughs> do I want to? No. I don't want to do that. I want to ride it. But it looks like in order to ride it, We've got to fix it. <laughs> so, I guess we'll be tearing into this engine and uh, doing crank seals. All right, I think we have a turn of events here. So, I was looking up online, and they said sometimes the pump needs to be primed. So, what I did was I first got gas down this line, the main line, and I saw that when we got gas up here, it was actually pumping to the carburetor. So I was like, what the heck? So I tried messing with these lines, and um, it seems like it's not sucking the gas up from the tank here. Like it can't get past this point for some reason, but it can suck it up through here. So it'll idle and run good with gas in this little bottle right here. So it can suck it up that little distance right there, but if we go all the way back to the tank, we can't. So I'm thinking there might be like a, a break in the line somewhere. Um, you know, where it's getting air, where it's getting air and not sucking up completely. And I also found that the engine needs to be running in order for that to suck up into the carburetor, which I don't think that should be the case, but that is the case. The return line was working as well um, when I had this thing running. I'll fill this back up with gas and show you that it does idle. So that is a huge, huge step um, in the right direction. I thought for sure it would be the seals, but maybe it's not. It's it still could be, but <laughs> um, but at least you know at least it's pumping now. All right, fresh bile gas going in. So I should use that and pump that through. Um, it did before, so we'll see. I did have to prime it with some gas on the carb to get it going first, um, in order for the pump to actually suck that up. But let's just see if it works now.
right, so that bile's almost empty. So that was sucking up the gas. So that's definitely working. Worked pretty good that time. Probably ran for a good two minutes there. So it is, in fact, working. At least we know that. So now we just have to figure out why it's not pumping through the gas line. All right, so I primed the line all the way down, and now it's sucking up through this bottle back here. So that means if we put it in the tank, it should suck up through the tank. So I think we may have gotten it. We just had to prime it. We had to prime all the lines so that there's no, no air in the lines, and then um, I think that's how you do it. So now it starts right up and runs. All right, we got the seat back on. Let's go attempt and uh, ride this thing. Uh, I don't know. It seems like it's cutting in and out um, pretty good, so I don't know if it needs another carb clean or what. But we can adjust some of these settings on here and just kind of see how it goes. But um, yeah, let's see what she does. All right, let's see if we can get it running long enough to, to move this thing. she moved. It's just digging up the lawn really bad. But yeah, she moves good. We might have to take it to the land where it doesn't matter if it gets ripped up, but you can see the lawn getting ripped up with those skis. There's a hole in one of them. But she starts up and goes. Turn this thing around. We might Go right to the trailer right here with it. Look at that. Made out to the land. Let's see if this thing can move for a long period of time. We know it can move. Can it move for a long period of time and be reliable? That's what we need to know. So it seems like it goes pretty good. Um, I'm not sure if the crank seals are bad. I guess we'll figure that out once we start riding it. But yeah, so far it's not too bad. Little premix going in.
Wow, she actually ran and moved. That is crazy. She's idling great now. She's been like this for five minutes. getting hot <laughs> man it's running great though it's crazy it hasn't shut up once looks like the carbs clearing itself out oh this thing fell off <gasps> that thing didn't last long that little cover <laughs> see if that pulley's still moving yep Oh yeah. Yeah, everything's looking good. Accidentally hit a big rock. Ooh, that wasn't good. Still getting gas to it. I wonder if the... All right, let's see what back happened. Oh, she fired right back up, baby. I fix the throttle a little bit. I could go a little bit faster, I think. I'll shut that off for a second here. I think the throttle can still go more. 
I just have it in a weird spot right there. See, I can still go all the way up to there. Huh. I might rotate that thing around. See if I can get that to work a little bit better. Cause there's still that much more to go. <sighs> but yeah, not running too bad <laughs> for a locked up sled. That is pretty crazy. All right, we got the throttle fixed here. So now it goes full speed. Let's see if we can get this thing flared up again. Come on, baby. Maybe a little choke. There we go. That's pretty incredible, actually. It's been sitting for 30 years. How are the crank seals not bad? <laughs> the lights in the back work too. Wow, I'm impressed. Wanted to quick check out the track here. I'm sure, my gas is pouring out, but uh, 
Yeah, the track doesn't look too bad, does it? It's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's not in horrible shape. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So these are just plastic spinning that track. Pretty cool. Alright guys, well this thing is basically done. Um, I don't think there's much left to do on it. I'm not going to stick any more money into it. I think I've got 300 bucks into it. I bought the parts sled plus this one, so um, they were both 150. So we've got 300 bucks stuck into it. But it does run, and the end result was awesome. We got to ride it for the first time in 30 years, and it actually ran pretty good. And it starts right back up now, so that is sweet. But yeah, I was just playing with the skid steer a little bit, getting used to that. Um, we're gonna have to get some more heavy equipment to build the track, I think. But this is a good starting point. But yeah, that is the video on the 1972 Articat Panther 340. Another one saved after probably like 12 hours of work. <laughs> but we finally got it, and that's uh, running good. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out.